SciFinder N, Substances Search. There are many ways to search for substances in the SciFinder N database. This tutorial will show you how to search by substance name and by molecular formula. Let's find the database. On the library's website, scroll down and click the Choose a Database button. On the next screen, scroll down and click the link for Chemistry. This gives you the list of all the databases that we recommend for this subject, and SciFinder is the third one down. Now, when you click on that link, you don't go directly to the database, and that's because if you haven't already, you need to set up a personal login account with SciFinder, and you will need this no matter where you're accessing the database from, whether on campus or off. If you already have a personal login, then click the link, go to the SciFinder database. Now this is a little bit tricky. Right now, there are two versions of the SciFinder database, an old one and a new one. SciFinder N is the new one. To get to SciFinder N, don't log in on this first login screen. Click this link down here, go to SciFinder N, and then log in. We've already selected the substances search, and I'm going to type in the substance name. which is formaldehyde, and I'm going to click the search. I'm going to go to the first result, which is just plain formaldehyde, and I'm going to click on the CIS number. This is a unique number assigned to just one substance, so that the substances can easily be told apart even though there are many permutations of them. I'm going to click that link, and I see the molecular structure and the formula and scrolling down on the substance detail page I'm seeing other points of data. And if I click on melting point that takes me down to a chart where I can see a range of melting points. Choose one of the melting points and click the number on the right. Now we clicked on 15 and 15 drops us down here to the citation for the journal article where that experiment appeared. And there's the author's name, the title of the journal, the year it was published, the volume, the issue, and the pages. I can click on the SciFinder logo to start over. And now I'm going to show you a molecular formula search. And notice that underneath the search box, SciFinder N is giving you examples of how to enter those searches. So I'm not going to leave any spaces here because that would goof up my search. And I'm going to put in the formula. I'm also going to click here, Add an Advanced Search Field. I'm going to click the drop-down menu, and there's lots of things to choose from. I'm going to go all the way down to Thermal, and then over to Melting Point. And I want to enter, enter a range of melting points and notice that you have to use two instead of a hyphen in between the two numbers. So I'm going to put in 235, 2, 255. And now that my search is all ready to go, I click search. And I'm going to take a closer look at the first item here again. I'm going to click on the cast number 
to go to the Substance Detail page, which shows me the molecular structure, the formula, those other points of data that we saw earlier. And in this ex example, I'm going to click on the Spectra link. And that drops me down to the Spectra information. I want the IR Spectras. So I'm going to click there. And now I can choose one of these and find the Spectrum ID. So I'm going to click that first one. And I get a lot of information here. Nice graph there on the side. And then down on the left, the Spectrum ID number. I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to click on Return to Substance Detail. Scroll back up again. And now I can click the Reactions button to find reactions with this particular substance. Now notice that on the left-hand side of the screen, you can limit your search by clicking in the boxes. And there's a lot to choose from. Uh, I just kind of randomly picked Reactant under Substance Roll, and that narrows it down a bit. And I also chose, under Experimental Protocols, Experimental Procedure. And that narrows it a bit further. The numbers in the parentheses tell you how many results you'll get. And so now we're looking at a list of reactions. And let's look at that first one there. Okay. And what you're seeing uh, on the right-hand side is the citation to the journal article where the experiment was published. And on the left-hand side, you're seeing more detail about what was used in getting that reaction. And you can click View Reaction Detail to get even more detail. Scroll down here, including the steps that they took, in many cases, to get the reaction. Thank you for listening. The end.